What is up guys, it is Nick. We are back and in today's video for Black Desert, we are going to be going over some beginner guide type tips for PlayStation as soon as you get on the game and continuing all the way up until like 55, 56. So kind of the, the beginning of the game because, you know, after 56 is truly when Black Desert begins, when you get your Awakening weapon. Though we won't have Awakening when the game first starts, we will get it, I would assume, decently quickly after the game is launched. Maybe not, maybe like a month or two. Um, they might speed it up a little bit quicker than they did on Xbox, but we'll have to wait and see. But let's get into the tips. So the first tip I have is to pick a hometown or a home region. So my home region um, is between Altanova and Tariff. So Altanova is like my main area, but I also use Tariff for some storage, but Altanova is my main one. The reason you want to pick a home one is because you can keep your characters there, swap gear, and also share resources. So in my storage area, which is right over here in Altanova, I have all sorts of goodies in here for sharing between characters. Pop open my warehouse. You can see I have all sorts of different stuff here. So I have Asula's rings for or necklaces for different characters. I have Whisper's earrings. I have ring, I have echo rings here. Um, I could gear out a character decently ear easily here. I have my crimson eye belts i have a sealed spell necklace just different things that i could potentially need upgrade stones uh crone stones valk's cries all sorts of different stuff as well as just stuff i wanted to store in here got restoration stones all sorts of different stuff that i would need between characters or like this helms destroyers but uh seals to get helms destroyers belts uh, as those turning quests i have that in here because i can deposit them between characters as I collect more from Helms. Just all sorts of different stuff to keep in here, as well as you can keep money. You can see in Tariff, I have some of the same uh, different stuff here. Nothing too great at, uh, at Tariff, but I do have some stuff like this black uh, spirit crystal that I've been saving in there. Uh, just all sorts of different random garbage that I keep in my two different storage. But you can see... In my other territories, all I have is stuff that's being collected by my workers. I don't have any other items sto stored in any of these locations, and so it keeps my stuff kind of organized. And I don't have any of that stuff being deposited in Altanova. I don't have any workers out here doing any work in Altanova or in Tariff that are depositing all sorts of random uh, crap into my warehouses. So that's the first one, is to pick a hometown uh, or region. Uh, I suggest just picking a hometown slash city uh, to, to be in, and I chose Altanova. I mean, a lot of people choose uh, Velia, which is over here. It's the one of the first town. It's the very first, like, main hub town that you get to. There's AFK Fishing right there and whatnot. Uh, there is AFK Fishing over here in Altanova, but there's all sorts of different stuff to do for Velia. You have um, a couple of different bosses really close nearby you have access to helms and elric shrine uh and it's, it's a pretty decent place uh you can see all my worker nodes going all over the side of the map and you can see it's pretty clean over here i did connect abandoned iron mine but that's it and it's not doing any farming but yeah uh the worker node network is kind of its own beast to talk about at a later time but uh, i would suggest connecting it probably away from wherever your hometown is unless you want to hit up the pearl shop and spend a fair amount of money in slot expansion for the different locations uh, if you expand the slots enough then it really doesn't matter if stuff is getting deposited in there uh, by your worker uh, network but like for mine, I only have like 60 slots. I don't have enough to have the workers depositing stuff and whatnot. So that's just a little tip for, for that is just pick a hometown and then probably, unless you want to spend some money to really unlock a bunch of stuff, keep your worker network away uh, on the other side or in a different location than where you are. Next is taking time. This is kind of a twofold tip. Take time to do the story and take time to farm. So 
what I suggest personally is that you get to level 55 when you finish up, um, when you finish up killing the Awakened Black Spirit quest. Um, and that is the quest that ends you up up here, right here, at Medea Castle. When you finish up this quest and you get to the quests, um, you get to these quests, the level 55s and level 56 quests, when you get to those, that's when I think you should be level 55. You can't really do those quests, but if you just straight bum rush the story, you don't actually get that high a level. But I suggest, my suggestion for... You know, do the full story because it gets you the inventory expansion, it gets you other items, it gets you money, um, and it gets you levels fairly easily. It doesn't take too long to complete. You can probably speed rush the story in a day if you really put enough effort and time into it. You could finish it in a day. But along the way, you will go to different locations, and that's where I'm going to suggest to do some farming. So at one point, you will get to Heidel here. And you will have an option to go to uh, Morietti Plantation. I suggest you do one level, one or two levels at Morietti Plantation or Castle Ruins. It shouldn't take you more than 15, 20 minutes to do a level or two. Uh, you could also go and wait and do it at the Swamp Foggins or Swamp Nagas or the Bloody Monastery. I just say between these five locations, you get three to four levels. If you can get three to four levels, it will help progress you faster. Uh, and it gets you out of this area. You'll get out of this area fairly quick. The next area that I suggest you invest some time into farming, at least for just, you know, even if it's just a brief, a brief moment of time, um, even if it's a half a level, it, it doesn't have to be too long, is to try to get a level within this area here. Half a level, a level at uh, Karudo Cave and uh, Karanda Ridge. Uh, those are, they're not the greatest farm spots, but I think it helps you progress uh, fairly easily if you can get a half a level there. Uh, then I would just rush the story. If you rush the story to 50, that's when you can really kind of pour on the levels and when you need to kind of take your time. Um, I would suggest trying to get two levels or a level and a half, a level to a level and a half at Tree Ant Forest. Mancha Forest and Cat Fisherman Camp. I do really love Catfish Camp, but uh, uh, Tree Ant Forest and Mancha Forest is a lot better than Tree Ant. So we'll go with Mancha Forest and Cat Fisherman. Somewhere between there, get a level to a level and a half. Then you move over after that, you'll do some other stuff, but you'll move over to this portion of the map. And this is really where you need to take some time. I would suggest trying to get a level at least at Abandoned Iron Mine a level at Helms, and depending on your AP, if you can't do Elric Shrine efficiently, either do a level, another level at Abandoned Iron Mine, or a level at uh, um, Mains, that would be my suggestion. Uh, then, when you finish up the story, you're hopefully close to level 56, like mid-55, low-55, aiming towards 56, so that when you finish up this quest, you have finished up the story, and essentially you just have to do minimal amount of work in order to get your awakening weapon. That's kind of a suggestion. So just take time to farm along the way while you're doing the main story. Uh, you go to all of these areas, so it's not that hard. Just while you're there, bang out a quick level or two and move on to the next area. Next is while playing through up to level 56, I suggest focusing on AP over DP. You get some decent armor along the way, it's nothing that you want end game. Like it's you're not gonna get like duo or pry weapons or armor or anything, but you're gonna get I think it's called the Lord set. You're gonna get the Lord set as well as for free. You're gonna get this magical armor later. Um, you'll get a red orc armor. Uh, there's a bunch of different decent armors that you're going to get that the upgrade over them that you'll have to spend is not as significant as the upgrades for weapons. So that's why I say to focus on AP over DP. Um, because even for the items here, I would suggest focusing on AP over DP for them. Now, the ones that give you both are good, but I would suggest the game just focuses on how many value points it's going to give you, whether it's attack or defense. So for something like this with the, we'll go with the, we'll go with the Asilas Crimson Eye Ring. So it's 7-3. 
Uh, and so I'm just going to make a comparison that's not a real comparison, but it, it for the sake of the video. So we're comparing the Ancient Weapon Core to the Asula's Crimson Eye Ring. The game is going to consider the same value because they both are a 10 value. But in my opinion, the Asula's Crimson Eye Ring that gives you 7 attack and 3 defense is better than the 5-5 five -five split. Uh, especially early in the game. It kind of shifts a little bit later in the game, but for this video's purpose of being pre-56 get you to 56 tips um i would suggest going at ap over dp um because there are spots where you need good ap to do some of the the quests and you get stuff done so i just think it's it's smarter to get ap over dp because that's what you'll really struggle with with proper potion management you can suffice with weak armor as long as you're not getting like two shot as long as you're sustaining which the lord's armor will do they get like it's like it's like a little bit below where like plus 15 armor is which is probably what you'd be looking at through the beginning of the game uh to 56 before you're really farming farming and so that's why i suggest just focusing on your weapons and your secondary weapon and making sure they're good and that your accessories help boost your your ap so moving on is pets. So if you're going to buy anything from the uh, Pearl Shop, I would suggest getting pets. Make sure you have four pets. Yeah, I have too many pets. But just make sure you get four pets. They're really important. They pick up items. They give you bonuses to certain things, whether it's knowledge increase, life XP increase, whatever it may be. Um, you can see they also have special skills, hostility detection, finds rare monsters, auto fishing reduced, hostility detection. But obviously the most important thing is they loot everything for you. You don't have to manually hold Y and do looting on your own. They'll do all the looting for you. And that is the most important thing. I believe on PC they can have five pets. We can only have... Oh, they actually updated it. We can have five now. Oh my gosh. Perfect. For a while there, I hadn't checked, and I didn't look. I didn't see it in the pack note. For a while there, we could only have four pets, and the PC could have five, but it looks like they have updated it for us, and we can go ahead and have five pets. So that's really good. So make sure you have all five pets you can have. You can see you can't have six. It says you can't take any more pets out, but five will be a massive help for me at least because I... Uh, I'm killing stuff really quick where I'm at, where I'm farming, and I kind of just have to sit there and let my guys pick it up. So having a fifth pet is really nice. So if you're going to pick up any of them in the, if you're going to buy anything in the pearl shop, I suggest pets first, and then obviously you can get other stuff. Uh, you can see all of their different skills if you click on them, and then view details, you can see all the talents and their specials uh, and what they're going to give you. Um, there's a certain aspect of picking, you know, there's stuff I would suggest that you should pick up that, but at a certain point for me, it's more about how the pet looks. Like, I really want this desert fox because I think it's cool. And it's also helpful because it reduces the hypothermia and the heat stroke by 36%. So I do, I do like that, but yeah, obviously choose whether or not you care about how they look. Or how they, uh, their actual usefulness. Where's my, okay, I was gonna say, where the heck did my crow go? Is my crow inside my, my cat? But no, cat just decided to sit on my shoulder over the crow. But let's move on to the next tip, and that is to farm for the Asula set. So the Asula set is one of the best sets in the game that you can get for free. Um, it's not sellable, but it is fairly easy to farm. And so I'll actually show it in here. So if I go to my Asula's Crimson Eye Ring, you can see right there what exactly you can get from each location. So the necklace is at the Abandoned Iron Mine. The ring and the belt, or the ring and the earrings are at Helm's Post. And the belt is at Elric Shrine. Uh, you can also see the set bonuses uh, there at the bottom, the item effects and whatnot. It's probably the best set that you can get, especially... Up until 56, there's not really anything that can compete against it for the value. I mean, you're paying nothing for it. They sell for a decent amount, as you could see in my um, warehouse when we were there. You do need weakened rings and, uh, and necklaces and earrings and belts to, in fact, level them up. But those are fairly easy, and you can get them to 
pry really easily. It's like a 70% chance of success. I say that as I tried to get a pry belt and it didn't, it failed. So, I mean, 70% is still 70%. There's still a 30% chance it fails, but 70% chance of success is, is pretty good. And so I suggest you pick up the Asula set. It's one of the oldest tips in the book for Black Desert is to grab the Asula set, but it still reigns as one of the best tips in the game is is to get a Sula set. So next is just a kind of a quality of life thing. Probably could have included this in the quality of life video, tips video, but that's to have some sort of inventory management. As you can see here, I have decent inventory management here. So at the top here, I have four rows for items that I pick up off of enemies. Um, I probably should move this down. I'm actually going to move this down here just to give me more room. So two, four, six rows to pick up items such as loot. I mean, such as loot, but I mean like armor and anything like that, weapons, stuff like that. That'll all fill up this area here. Black stones, memory fragments, forbidden books, relics, stuff like that. That'll all fill up the top part here. Then I have my turn-in items here. I've been farming thousands. And so here are the different turn-ins. They're down here, so I can easily see those. Then we have the items that I use along the way, the item or the scrolls and stuff that I use along the way, item drop, combat XP, skill XP, blessings, teas, food, all of that different stuff goes in this row. I have it there instead of the bottom row here just because I don't think I need that many rows to farm. And then all the way down here at the bottom is I have the stuff that I don't need all the time, like my carrots for my horse, my feed for my pets, um, just different stuff down here. My potions are down here because you don't go into your inventory to use them, or at least I don't, so they don't need to be in a visible spot, and so they're down here. Most of this inventory expansion was gotten through the story, like I said. Um, there are packs in here, function, inventory. I did, I believe, buy, I think I bought 116, and that's all I bought. The rest, I think I got from the story. Maybe I bought one more, but, um, I didn't have to buy a whole lot of my inventory space. You get a lot of it from the story. One thing I do suggest in the store if you're going to buy is weight limit because, oh my gosh, weight limit becomes such a huge issue, especially because potions weigh a lot. Money has, um, I mean, just everything has weight and it, it really sucks because I believe your armor is factored in as well, which is horrible because heavy armor, obviously adds to it and not all armor adds like weight limit like the ancient weapon core that i have on that adds weight limit uh increase but as you can see i'm at 87 or 873 of my 1177 right now and i don't even have any armor that i've picked up and whatnot and armor can range heavy in weight and so picking up the inventory and weight expansions can be can be good stuff to pick up but yeah, then what my final tip is going to be is figure out your rotation of skills. Spend your time, look at your skills. Um, I have my general rotation, so I'm going to come over here to some flat. Actually, let's go up to the roof. Let's go to the roof, but figure out a rotation of its skills and attacks for tougher enemies. I mean, with easier enemies, obviously, you don't need a great rotation. You're going to smack them easily, but for me, with this character, I really like this attack into that. I'll either lead with this or follow with that attack uh, after I do it. And then I'll either Shards of Darkness into popping it, or I'll do that first. It kind of depends on the rotation that I am that I feel like I need. I'll either pop that before the, the set of these skills that I do, or I'll pop it after into my Awakening, because then I can right trigger into my Awakening weapon, and then it's just plenty of options from here. I can do this attack, which I've come to love a lot more. I can do my spin to win, which is my favorite PvE attack. It works in PvP too, but it's my favorite PvE. And then this attack that I can never get to... Oh my gosh, I can never get this attack to cooperate. This is my favorite attack currently on this character. Um, it's really effective at clearing out massive mobs. Uh, and then it's just kind of, once I get into my Awakening weapon, it's just kind of what I'm feeling. It's just kind of pretty much do whatever I want. There's not really a set rotation. I know all the skills and I have all the skills memorized, so it's just kind of based on necessity and need of skill. 
So if I need to clear out a massive mob, I can do the spin to win. If I'm trying to do fast AOE to guys in front of me, I can do the... I can do my spell. There's just plenty of different options, but I do have a general rotation in my mind, and it's one of the things that uh, is big because, you know, like I've been scolded for in the comments multiple times, RT spamming and RB spamming, you know, is not the way to play. But, you know, like the spin to win is just so good. It's, it's, so, it's so good. But I do have a rotation of skills on this character for tougher enemies. And I, I have a general conceptual. Like, it's kind of hard to explain because I played this character enough now that I have, like, I have a general... I just kind of do it in flu fluid motion for whatever the skill calls for. Like, if I don't need to use my attack on the 30-second cooldown, I won't do it in a rotation, but it'll rotate through eventually when I do use it. It's just kind of figuring out, practicing, getting your rotation down, and hopefully you can get it down. I would suggest getting a rotation down before 56, before you get your awakening. Have a general, because I had this rotation down before I even... Um, got my awakening weapon i had my base rotation the beginning of my rotation because i always start out like this if i'm going to actually fight and we do that attack and then you can blow up this attack gain some health back that's why i kind of wait on it usually is because i don't actually always need that and then i pop that and then i used to go into that attack but i don't really go into it anymore because it's not that good and popping my shards of darkness for damage boost is actually more important to me than throwing them like that for because i have better aoe attacks with my awakening weapon but you just find you just got to find your rotation and everything will kind of come one final thing is just to save some skill points so just save some skill points in general for awakening skills when you get there um it's not hugely necessary that you have a ton of skill points left but just have some uh, for some skills when you get to 56 and unlock awakening or when awakening comes out just save some combat skills for that um don't spend them all on pre-awakening stuff but that's gonna do it guys a little bit of some beginner tips i'll have a full noobs guide just going over this in more detail and adding some stuff in once the game fully releases that'll be like a full series that i'm going to do will be the noobs guide and so i hope you guys will check that out but i hope you guys enjoyed this video drop it a fat like if you did subscribe if you have and not and i'll catch you guys later peace